evening, everyone. Uh, let me start my two slides first about Cambodia. Go through the slide, and if necessary, later on we can discuss in more details. Before moving to the preparedness and respond to COVID-19 in Cambodia, let me also briefly uh, share two slides about the basic of a SARS-CoV-2 transmission. Just to highlight that uh, from infected persons through coughing, sneezing, and breathing and other like talking, then the droplets can get out from that person and can land directly in nose, mouth, eyes, and possibly lungs of the other people. And the other way around, it's possibly that if they cannot land directly on another person, it can also fall on surface or any object that the other people can touch and can get infected. And there is also a small evidence around another possible way of transmission is through aerosol for which the droplet becomes smaller and spread in the air, which is uh, roughly less than five microgram. And that is only happening in specific circumstances or setting, for instance, many medical procedure in the ICU room. So just to highlight that uh, for the first intervention, perhaps the most important we can highlight is the face mask. This is a very important one and Cambodia have took that seriously since the very beginning of the epidemic, uh, the outbreak. So the Prime Minister have announced publicly that we have to put the face mask. It does not mean that uh, the mask, the surgical mask or any other mask but the face mask and in Cambodia we have a traditional uh, uh, Khmer tower we call it chroma it's also recommended to be used for any person who feel that they are sick or having common cold or cough have to cover there and then the other way it's easy to talk about the prevention for the first way of direct transmission is to have the physical distancing or possibly combine with the personal protection equipment or exposure. And then for the surface and uh, object contact, the easy measure and very commonly known is the hygiene, mainly hand hygiene by washing hand probably as doctor uh, said at the moment. And of course for aerosol, if in particular circumstances like in ICU, of course the, the healthcare provider working in that area Talking about the test, we have done over 14,000 tests. It's approximately about uh, 12 or 13,000 people. And if we calculate per million population, we got like 800 something, over 800 tests per million. This is quite high rate, the testing rate, as compared to other countries and the global average around 500. But certainly not as high as the other neighboring country like in Singapore, Vietnam, Thailand. So when we are positive, but then suspected case, the one that we have to conduct the testing and also contact tracing is one that defined by K definition. And this K definition have evolved over time. Very strict definition in the very beginning, very narrow, to be a very large and broad definition to allow more possibility to test and to this to, to explore or to, to try to buy possible copy transmission. We strictly follow WHO. And WHO have uh, defined four scenario. One is the country with, okay, can the country with a few cases mainly import and then cluster and then the large transmission. So Cambodia have gone through uh, and then we reactivate or we enhance, we scale up the existing emergency response mechanism we have, including uh, rapid response teams, and we have all the, the sentinel, surveillance sites, and so on, so on. And then we also have created the so-called National Committee to Fight COVID-19, chaired by our Prime Minister, with the top uh, uh, decision maker, and there are many other subsequent multi-sectoral working group and task force including a training task force for which I'm in that group. And then we at the same time also uh, enhance the education, community education and recommunication about the COVID-19, including development of many educational tools, communication strategies, and disseminate 
countrywide through many available means, including media and Facebook, etc., and also telephone. So every time we call, there is a uh, message before we get the answer. There is an alert that be careful, be reminded with the COVID-19 and so on, take your personal protection measure, something like that. The one that I think is uh, critical to the uh, the control of, of the and, and since the very beginning, even before we identify the case, and we also have quite a very effective contact tracing for many reasons, including the fact that we have also involved the military and also police intelligence to identify the contact person because the contact tracing is the most difficult work that uh, the health people or the public health people cannot do it uh, alone. So normally we follow WHO uh, criteria for confirmed care we isolate and we send them to the hospital for full up care and treatment and for suspected case or any contact person with the confirmed case we also uh, isolate them or put them in quarantine and then test and screen them for symptom. One symptom happen, we also uh, uh, send them for the follow-up in the hospital. At the same time, we also strengthen and expand case management services in public hospital, mainly at the provincial hospital, including infrastructure, material, human resources. More importantly, the government have decided to give cash incentive to frontline workers and those who are exposed to the, the infection or the HIV. Their work are exposed to the HIV, uh, to the COVID-19, sorry. So uh, it's around $40 per day. It's already like uh, three times more than their salary. So then at the same time, the government also took many public health and administrative measures to ensure social or we can say a physical distancing and also a special plan to manage migrant workers returning from abroad. Why? Because the migrant worker is considered as one potential source that lead to community transmission that may be also spread around and uh, lost control uh, uh, way. That's why we took that group as a serious, more seriously and as a priority risky group. So now I would like to show a summary of the flowchart of our case identification and contact tracing. So starting from a general mechanism to screen suspected case, and we also have some additional mechanism. If there is any particular uh, suspicion in some area for which it does not uh, fall into definition, we still also have to do a screening and both mechanism can allow us to identify suspect case. As soon as we identify suspect case, we isolate them or put them in quarantine depending whether they are symptomatic or not. And then we immediately collect the specimen, the sample, and then uh, do the testing. At the same time, there are also some other group that uh, is a priority or risky group also uh, ask for the test, including those who are requiring the certificate to go back home for the foreigner. And then when the test result negative, but then these people having a history of contact with the confirmed case, we still put them under the full up in the quarantine for 14 days. Within these 14 days, as soon as they becoming symptomatic, we do the test. If otherwise, we only do two tests at the end, uh, last 48 hours. And if not, then we can release them. And for the negative without any contact history, we can release them. And for positive, we isolate, we follow up, and then we send them for the care and treatment in the isolation area, in the hospital. And then we conduct in-depth interview with the case, the patient, and also other possible source of information, including telephone uh, tracking, and also camera, and so on, so on to identify and to trace the contact person. And this had to be done within 48 hours after the test is being confirmed. And then based on that fact, we build a list of contact person for whom we also have to consider as a suspected case and also the same measure will be taken as a suspected case. 
So along this period, we introduce four form. The form one is the form for screening to look for suspected case. Form two is the laboratory testing form. Form three is the follow-up form for suspected case. And form four is the case reporting and contact tracing form. And then the five is about the list of contactors and for whom we have to take some measure. And these are the few listed uh, public health and administration uh, measure to ensure physical distancing. So in Cambodia, so far, we haven't decided to put the country in lockdown for the whole country, but we have this decided a couple of measures depending on the risk to ensure physical distancing. So the first one that we, the government, the prime minister had decided to close schools, all level of schools, starting first in Simbria town where we found the first case and then to over the country. At the same time, schools are encouraged to adopt distance and e-learning method instead of face-to-face. -face. And then all the social events which have more people gathering, more than 10 people, for instance, including concert, wedding, reception, sport events, bar, karaoke, casino, are closed. But the government still allow market and restaurant to open. And to control big movement of people, especially a factory worker during the Khmer New Year holiday in April, the government decided to apply no holiday policy to employees and the government official. It means that they have to work during the Khmer New Year public holidays from 13 to 16 April. And at the same time, the government also banned of travel across province, with exception for group transporter, armed forces and civil servants traveling to work for the COVID are not allowed to travel across province between the, during the period of the community as well from 10 to 16 April. And last but not least is the measure to make the migrant worker returning from abroad, mainly from Thailand. Although the border between Cambodia and Thailand is officially closed, but many Cambodian migrant workers who work in Thailand, when all the shop, restaurant, and many businesses close over there. They have no nothing to do. They decided to go back home, to come back home, and then the government still allowed them to enter. And then we decided to make a plan to manage these people, to minimize or to mitigate the risk. So this is the flow chart to explain how we manage these people. So we have first level at the border level. We have a screening border screening point. So if people found to have fever, we immediately send them to the current time level two at the border. Otherwise, we let them go to province with a, a range transport, not private transport, a special range transport to send them to the screening point at the provincial level. There they screen for symptom again. And if no symptom, they let them go again to the district. And then if they have symptoms, then there at the provincial level, there is also a quarantine level two at the provincial, quarantine center level two at the provincial level. And then some additional screening tool can be done for people who have no symptom after screening at the provincial level and some no additional screening depending on the ability and affordability of the local district. The people can be sent to quarantine center Quarantine center one, level one, a district level. And then the last one for those who have nothing, still also are asked to be in home quarantine for 14 days. So you see this measure is very strict and it's involved not only the health personnel, but also local authority, district armed forces and police as well to ensure this is done correctly. So this is the end of my presentation about Cambodia. I think the, the diagnostic I will skip because I think Dr. Saman Singh, he will uh, speak more about that. Maybe just a few words about the test. From the medical perspective, just to know that uh, there are not only disease-specific tests that people often talk about, the laboratory testing, but also there is a non-disease-specific test for which the test to allow diagnosis with the symptom and clinical sign. For instance, for COVID, we have a, quite a number of specific uh, or common uh, symptoms like fever and CT, uh, CT chest scan. 
for instance, but then not everywhere can be done in CT scan, but fever is becoming a very common one. But still, uh, there are a lot of uh, discussion uh, whether there is a scientific proof. In Cambodia, to be honest, the fever scan doesn't help at all. And then we have the disease specific, we have the immunoassay. It means the, the, the test, we can call it a serological test, which include antigen based and antibody based. So antigen, it means that we can detect the viral protein in the body fluid, for instance, the upper respiratory fluid, like sputum or, or, or swab of the fluid. And the other immunoassay is antibody based. It means that detect antiviral body in the blood. So when the infection happen after some time, the infected people in the body start developing antibody. At that time, we can have this test positive. So the other one that is the, the standard using today for the diagnostic of see that the non-disease non specific doesn't work well in COVID-19. So this is only allow increasing the prevalence among the risk people for other disease specific tests only. So I think this illustration is also interesting, but I think the Dr. Saman Singh will perhaps go through it. Just to highlight that after the onset of the symptom, the viral RNA or the one that respond to a molecular test can start immediately and then reach the peak after some day. Here for illustration, I cannot put the number of days because there is not sufficient evidence to fix the date, how many days after that. But uh, as you can see here, the red line, it's a viral antigen. It's uh, uh, showing quite similar time to the molecular test. It means antigen-based test can detect the virus at the same similar time as the molecular test. And then you see the two other line, it's about antibody test. It's uh, very common to look for immunoglobulin M and immunoglobulin G as antibody. So normally immunoglobulin M develop first before immunoglobulin G, but G, when it develops, it can remain for so long. Based on this graph, it's just to say that the viral RNA or molecular test or antigen-based immunoassay is the test to look for active case or current infection. Why antibody It's more to look for past infection. So I go straight to the last slides. So by now, WHO, as we all know, that uh, WHO only recommended diagnostic test for COVID-19 is a molecular test. But this test also have a lot of uh, limitation as well. As you can see that uh, they are increasing apart from a uh, false negative. Uh, as a common uh, limitation of this test, depending on the, the quality, not just of the test, but also the specimen collection, the time of specimen collection, and also the laboratory uh, uh, procedure. At the same time, molecular tests also recently show us so there is a fall positive. As you can, uh, maybe you hear already like in uh, the case in Korea, South Korea, uh, they, they declare that uh, the, the suspected reinfection becoming fall positive because the, the, the particle of the virus or all the virus can also provide genetic and then can be detected by the molecular test and become positive as a fall positive. So my last word is that uh, for the test, uh, certainly molecular test is very good. It's the only one we have so far. And antigen based, although it's not yet ready, and still under evaluation, but it shows quite some potential for allowing more and larger test coverage. So if it will be reliable soon, made reliable soon, then it will become also an additional solution to the testing for the COVID-19. And for antibody, it's clear that uh, it's to prove infection. So when it Infection is proof. It does not mean that the infection is still active. The patient, the positive patient, can already cure or it's a past infection. So it's 
only serve for public health or research purpose more than just for diagnostic. And at the same time, there are many companies also today try to address the limitation of the PCR limitation that is required sophisticated laboratory uh, base to become a test that can be done near point of care. Like for instance, recently that the uh, special uh, cartridge for uh, gene experts. So that's all of my presentation. Thank you very much.